Now, one way you may want to visualize your data is through multiple different charts. And yes, you can just produce multiple different charts using our you know, previous method, but you can also generate something called subplots within one giant figure if you're trying to show multiple things at once. So a visualization of this would be, say for example, we take the iris data and we do scatter plots from uh, each one of the different data points to just see some visualizations. As you can see, we're seeing some right here. So the entire idea is this in itself is just one subplot this is another subplot, etc., etc. So, how do we go about working off of this? To start, when we're first uh, starting out, the first thing we actually need to do is instead of just immediately going in and saying something like plot or uh, scatter, like before, instead we first establish that we are going to be working off of something called subplot, so plt.subplot. Then it's expecting some uh, constraints. The two most important ones are the number of rows and the number of columns. Columns, there we are. Now, before we get into something like share X and share Y and everything uh, else here, two things are going to be produced. This is going to produce a tuple where the first value is the uh, over, I'll, I'll call it sort of the overall figure. And this is, in that case, sort of the entire graphic. But then it's also going to produce some separate value that is the individual subplots sub plots now i'm calling them axes uh, because again multiple uh, the plural of axis is axes you may also see this uh, very commonly in tutorials b a x again this is now just sort of naming uh, you know uh, standards that people have employed over the years i do both uh, just really depends on you know my my day but the entire idea is that now, if we want to represent any particular axes, we are going to use this as if it was a list. So in that case, if I want to work off of any particular value, I would specify, say for example, axes, and then I'll call this first just sum index. Now to start, we're going to actually just work off of a very small subplot. So the entire idea is just, I want to have two graphics right next to each other. And for our sake, we'll start with something like a uh, pie chart. So if we come in, I've already thrown together some uh, you know, data just to kind of uh, have it here. Uh, I actually don't even need NumPy, so let me get rid of that. So the entire idea is, again, I have uh, sort of some per percentages, and then I have labels for each one of those percentages, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and other. Okay, so I need to first produce my subplots. So once again, I need to specify that I'm going to have an overall figure, and then I'm going to have some axes attached to it. And then I'll set that equal to uh, plt.subplots. Now, when we're dealing with, say, for example, this visualization, again, I only want one row with two columns, one row, two columns. I build it, I, I show it, and there you go. It's just going to give me a very blank uh, thing to start. But this is where I sort of, this is one of the reasons why I just said an axis to start, and I didn't expand on that, because this is where, uh, I won't lie, uh, you know, matplotlib can get a little funky. So just as that preface, if we're dealing with a single row of subplots, then we only use a single index. So in this case, zero is going to refer to that left value. Now, like I said, I want to show a pie chart. Well, just like plotting, scatter, you can maybe take a stab in the dark at what this uh, value will be, pi. Okay, all right, fair enough. Now it's going to be expecting what values. 
That's our C category. So if we take a look just now, you'll you'll see it, you know produces a little text. That's just sort of some output that uh, Jupiter is also showing us. But you can see there's our our pie chart. Now again, we have labels that I want to also attach to this, and this is where depending on the specific the specifics of which type of chart you're producing it may either be labels or label or l and so l equaling l oh it's not l it's label labels i'll get it eventually <laughs> labels there we go awesome now it's still not perfect as you can sort of see it's you know kind of bleeding in a weird spot here but again just because we're still working off of uh, the entire idea of these uh, pie charts. The next one I'll show just as sort of the fancy sort of way is this time I can come in and not ax, axes. Same kind of thing, I'll do the pie, I'll still do C, I'll still do labels equaling uh, L this time. But let's say for example, I want to have these slightly separated. That's where we'll use an additional command, exploded. And then we just specify how far we want each individual uh, data point, each one of these, to be separated out. So maybe we really want to accent the argon uh, value. So nitrogen, I'll keep at zero, doesn't need to move, it's quite large. Uh, oxygen, uh, the next one, I'll say that's uh, going out uh, 0.1. Uh, argon, we'll say it goes out 0.2, and then other, since it's very small, we'll say only goes out 0.5. So again, we're now just sort of showing a separation. Nitrogen, then go out. Oxygen, go out just a little bit. Uh, argon, go out a little bit more. Uh, other, go less out. So we take it, not exploded, explode. And there you have it. So you can see now we've got sort of that first subplot, again, being referenced with axes at zero. And then we have our second subplot, axes at one. And again, we've got a little exploded action going on there. Now, just to expand on that, what happens when I'm dealing with multiple rows and columns? This is where we can get fancy. So in that case, just to kind of uh, clean that up uh, with one row, a single digit with uh, two plus rows, a list of X and Y, or really not so much of a list, but a tuple, if you will. And so just to see this as sort of an action, you can see, oh, well, I still am going to give it the square brackets. This is still, yes, you're still technically doing this. This is technically a tuple because axes is not really treating this as a list anymore. It's now treating it like a dictionary. And so in this case, as you can sort of see, uh, if I want to, in this case, uh, change something like the face color or the background, I have another command called set face color. And then this is just where you can pass in uh, different commands, uh, such as, for example, some of the named colors. Uh, so I could have said red, orange, yellow, or salmon, if I want to be super fancy. But this would allow me to go in and then say set face value. If I wanted to do my scatter plot, for example, I would come in axes at, let's say, for example, I'll just represent, I'll go with this one right here. Uh, that is on the second row. So referencing it by our zero or starting at zero, one, two, three. So representing that that first value would be one. And then we're working off of the zeroth column. So zero. And then we would treat this no different than when we were working off of the just PLT version. I'd just come in and specify my scatter values. 
Now I do have some extra things going on here, like I have multiple colors. Well, if we were to take a look at something like that scatter plot, here it is sort of in actual code, the same kind of concepts coming in here. It's a lot, I won't lie. So to start, the idea is we're traversing through each one of our values. So for uh, range and then for range again. So for each row, for each column. Then, as you can see, I'm creating some multiple axes for each one of the species of the iris data set. So Satosa has its XY axis, uh, Varicolor has its XY axis, Virginica has its XY axis. So we're building out, we're starting out with our skipping over our header, so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, and then as you can see, we're treating this with a CSV reader, which is going to read through this as if it was a list. Okay, fair enough. Then as you can see, I'm going in and I'm going ahead and separating each one of those out for me. This is going to take all five of the values that are on each line in the CSV reader uh, and go ahead and establish a value for them. So sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the species. Then I'm just going to separate out or determine which one of the x-axis I want to be working off of. So I'm using a conditional statement to work off of this. Checking these species and saying, oh, well, if I'm in this case, say, for example, Satosa, I want my x-axis to be the Satosa x-axis. If I'm in Varicolor, then I want my x-axis to be my, x, my Varicolor axis. Then I'm doing some fanciness. I'm just going ahead and creating a mapping. So I'm creating a dictionary where I only want to work off of sepal length. So in this case, I take this dictionary with all these values and I'm adding them into that, that particular x, y axis. Okay. So again, anything that was a Satosa uh, data entry is going into this particular list and then I'm just appending those into it, uh, appending a dictionary into it. But then you can see I have sort of some extra information. This is uh, for a scatter, for example, we need to use something like, well, I'm establishing my marker size, so there's a little size difference to there. And then you can see I'm making three, three, three entries into that particular element. So. Uh, Again, if we're thinking about this as this uh, one zero entry, uh, I in that case would be one, J would be zero, and I'd say scatter the Satosa XY axes, color them red, and make them uh, a size of five. And so that's where that red data points are. And then do the same thing for Varicolor's XY axis, color them green, so you can see some greens going on there. And then Virginica, once again, this time doing blue, and you can see sort of that blue going on there. Now I am adding in a little extra flare to this version just for uh, visualization sake. Uh, and one of those is I'm changing the tick marks to not appear. The entire reason just to even see why this is happening. I take this, I run it, give it a second. Question, you know, life skip ahead I, uh, there we are this is sort of why i'm skipping i'm removing those tick marks is because uh you know it's getting a little ugly and doesn't visually sort of do it for me so i'm just getting rid of those using this command so the entire idea here is first i have to get the xy axis and then i have to set it to a blank list that's just again this is how you need to do it with uh matplotlib and then once again, I'm using those, uh, I'm using something called set X label and then set Y label to specify specifically what number I'm working off of. So in this case, I want say sepal length to, if I'm dealing it once again with this uh, one zero, uh, this, specific, this specific subplot, I want one to be sepal width. So uh, I would be the one and I want our Y label to be zero, so sepal length. So sepal length, sepal width. Then just to add in that flare, just to again, just specify these different things we can work off of. Here I'm coming in and then the zero three, zeroth row, third column. I'm just changing the background to something like salmon. 
So again, just to clean it up, there we are. But this can be a number of different things. So it could also be a hexadecimal value. So something like FF0000, which would translate into a very bold red. Very bold red, as you can see, it actually washes out the uh, setosas, but that's where you know you would get a little fancier, like D4, uh, I don't know, 32, 32, right? So red, but not super red. Red, not a, not a good red. Uh, I'll go back to my salmon. And there you have it, subplots.